Hi, and welcome back to the Kind Fibers channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how I take nothing but blocks and turn it into roving with nothing but my hands. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. All right, so a little bit of a background real quick. I am working on this shawl. It is the Sekuro Kuor shawl by uh, Nimrod Townsend. And it is probably the fifth or sixth shawl that I have made from this pattern. I have the body done. It's more of a shawlette uh, is the size that I'm doing because I'm doing a much smaller version of it. And I'm getting ready to get into the lace, the beaded lace section. So I have decided to change the colors and I am now working with this colorway, which is just a variation of the colorway um, that I already had started. So let's get to the meat. I have my locks here and I already have a little bit of a strand ready to go. So the first thing that I do is I tease apart all of my locks simply by pulling them and kind of drafting them out into a small pile. And honestly, when you first get started with the first couple of locks, it's a little hard because they want to stick to you and not to the other pile of fluff on the table. So I am literally just taking a few strands, pulling them out, until I get a pile. So I'm going to work on that real quick. And then once I have a big pile, I'll show you what I do next. All right, so here I am on the last lock. And I don't know how well you'll see this, but if there's little pieces of trash, they kind of fall out. Um, and this is where if there is any trash in the fleece, you definitely want to get it out. These fleeces are pretty clean. Um, it's a combination of Jacob, Romney, and Lincoln. Like see, there's like this little nep thing right there. By pulling it just very gently, you can just pull that out and be done with it. And if you end up with a tender fleece, this can be a way to process it. Um, but always remember, if you do process out a tender fleece, that it will never create a strong of yarn as a regular fleece does, but it will still be usable for, you know, hats, gloves, stuff that doesn't take a lot of stress. So like I'm pulling out little, like little knot bits and stuff like that. So all that gets pulled out in this stage. Okay. Next, we're going to draft it out into these individual, I don't know, logs, hmm? slivers, I guess. I guess that would be called slivers. I'm not sure what the technical term is for it. Okay, so now I'm just going to make sure I have a clean workspace and begin drafting. This helps to blend the fibers and it also helps to just get everything lined up going in the same direction. 
So this would be kind of akin to dizzying on a pair of combs. But when you do this, you end up dizzying a lot more than you do with combs. All right. Ooh, sticky. I don't know if y'all can hear the rain on the roof. Yesterday was kind of overcast, but the day before was beautiful. I went out and cut trellises for our peas that I'm going to plant next week when the rain stops. It's a very exciting time around here. Oh, I missed a spot. So because I don't have regular equipment doing this, I have to be a little bit more fastidious when I see things about kind of taking care of that. Um, as you know, the better you prepare your fibers, the better your yarn comes out. And I started doing this when I first started spinning and I had absolutely no equipment other than a drop spindle and crazy me went and bought three fleeces from Molly over at Spring Rock Farm, which if you are looking for Stellar Jacob from a shepherdess who treats their Jacob incredibly well, I would highly suggest Molly and Paul Baker at Spring Rock. There's another little spot. It's like micro second cuts. Okay. So now I have my pile of fluff and I'm going to draft this out into four equal portions. approximately equal about you know the same length not necessarily equal weight sections. And they're going to be just a little bit longer this time. Okay, maybe not much longer. <laughs> All right, maybe I'm going to do three instead. But you get the idea. I'm just continuing to align it and blend it. All right. I think we're ready for our final go. Now you will never get it as smooth as doing it with carters or carters with combs. It just never comes out quite as smooth, but if you have no carters, no combs, nothing but your hands, 
and a little drop spindle, this may be the way to go. And if you're beginning, you don't have to invest in equipment. And if you've been doing it for a while, it may just be something to experiment with. Roll it up into a little bump. And there you go. Hand drafted roving. And this is my yarn that I've made. As you can see, it's a semi worsted, um, but all the yarn for this project has been done like this. So, kind fibers, craft no harm. You don't craft harm, do you, Iris? Huh? Do you? You don't? No, you don't. You good boy. <laughs>